So our large uh, employers paying wages over 1.5. Um, okay, so we've we've kind of touched on wages and we've touched on industry. Um, the third component is performance, and this is these are the as I said before the drivers of our premium for EBR um, application. I might spend my time on on performance here um, because we have um, started talking about how we deviate away from industry. So an employer's performance is driven by their claims experience. It is the resulting premium rate uh, relative to their industry rate. So for our employers, it's expressed as a percentage of industry rate. And this allows us to benchmark our performance against our peers within the same industry. I've got a, uh, a snapshot of um, how it appears on WorkCover Connect. Um, in that little table there, we have um, an example of a premium rate for an employer that's 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.606 uh, compared to their industry rate, which is 0.598. So from a performance perspective, there are 102% of industry rate and therefore performing a little bit above the industry in terms of um, premium rating. So the goal is um, as time goes on, we will approach our premium rate. And if we are performing well in terms of claims experience, we'll come down below the 100% of industry rate over time. Um, continuing with uh, our conversation about uh, performance, when looking at our performance under the EBR model, we consider claims experience, as I mentioned, this is the cost of work cover managing your claims. This is the E and EBR experience. So what goes into this? We consider the cycling total of four years worth of claims costs, the, the four preceding years of claims costs at each renewal. And this is made up of three years of statutory claims costs plus one year of common law costs preceding that period. This is what makes up our uh, claims experience that factors into performance. What's not included uh, journey claims, recess claims away from work, and costs of individual claims exceeding the cap of $185,000. So what are the benefits of the EBR model? There's, there's a list there. Um, the first one is lowering, lowering your premium by improving your performance. We can do this by implementing safe work practices to reduce injuries and supporting our injured workers in getting back to work while their uh, injury is being managed. And this speaks to um, our influence on our claims experience. Uh, and influence is important, which I'll, uh, I'll touch on in a second. There's a 30% limit on annual premium increases, and this prevents significant year-on-year -year premium increases. Um, we may have large catastrophic claims that might occur, unfortunately, and these do occur from time to time. Uh, it's good that uh, a limit on the actual premium increase is in place so that we don't get that bill shock. Uh, I mentioned $185,000 as a cap, so any excess over that is included as is, or as our journey and recess claims away from work. There are premium rate cappings as well that are inbuilt into the formula of the EBR. Uh, and this prevents significant rate increases as well, uh, um, uh, driven by uh, experience. And then influence, I mentioned influence. So we as individual employers can influence the industry rate. We do our little bit uh, for the industry. So through uh, our little contribution towards safe practices at work, we can collectively um, you know, reduce the industry rate. And underlying all of this is um, smoothing of volatility. So um, premium will grow over time or, or, or will change over time, over time I should say. Um, so that it's not volatile over the life of our policy, there are pr protective mechanisms in the EBR designs that uh, smooth out the pricing uh, over the long term. So the themes really are um, influenced through good claims and safety management, capping mechanisms in builds, uh, volatility smoothing and as previously previously mentioned it's designed to strike our true rate for our injury risk profile over the long term uh, i think the theme of um 
Claims experience is, is equally uh, applicable to EBR customers. I've got three uh, approaches here. The first one is improving return to work. Um, so this is around helping to get our injured worker back to work sooner, uh, which leads to better claims outcomes. Uh, and of course, the, the, the cost impact of that. Um, improving the support that you provide to injured workers during their claim and earlier in the claim or by offering them suitable duties, all will contribute to improving their return to work. And this is about duration, minimizing the duration of your claim, and getting them rehabilitated, back to work, back to life as soon as possible. The second point here is, is around procedures, policies and practices that we have in our workplace. And Mel, uh, you mentioned the IPAM program, which is a great in, uh, a joint initiative. Um, we, we have control over our workplace. so the better our health and safety policies, procedures and practices, uh, the better the environment is for the safety of our workers. And on the IPAM program, uh, it was conceived, I think it was 2010 and 11, if my memory serves, um, around 2000 employers have benefited uh, from, the, from um, participating in that program, which is really great. The third uh, approach here is showing a commitment to workplace safety uh, as a culture and, and um, training around that. So by demonstrating that we as employers are committed to a safe and healthy workplace and building that culture of safety can help improve our claims history. Now, the themes around uh, this are about what we can control and what we can influence in our own workplace. So as we've mentioned, underlying our ability to minimize premium is claims experience. So accordingly, how we support our injured workers during their claim uh, and how we reduce the rate of injury incidents at our workplace and what safety environment we establish in our workplace all make the difference.